about a butcher who literally uses human meat. And Emily is, well, about a young girl, and it's probably the most positive-minded movie ever made. That's including Frank Cap, and both of them pull it off excellently. So yes, it's important to note that this man does know what he's doing. He is a very competent director. Honestly, I would say that the reason this movie sucks is because he wasn't really right for the franchise, which, let's be honest, should have ended one or two movies ago. What might have thrown a lot of people off is this has the French sense of humor and the French style of doing action scenes and such. You know, you've got the dude who shoots and makes his bullets ricochet. You've got these really odd-looking weapons that are, you know, built out of just regular equipment. You know, they assemble them in a couple of seconds. And the idea of hidden weapons that are assembled in a couple of seconds isn't foreign to American movies. It's just that in American movies, they tend to look badass. Let's be honest, one of the few good things about Swordfish, apart from Hal Berry's breasts, was the assembling and subsequent use of a lightweight machine gun. And in this, you know, they're made from, you know, the thermos or parts of the dude's wheelchair. The characters distinguish themselves, but there's not a lot of development of them. Something that may have also been a bit much for some audience members is the ridiculous amount of testosterone there is in this movie. And having seen some other French action movies, that's how they make action movies. You know, watch Doberman, and to a lesser extent, Taxi. I would say that this one has genuine tension and suspense, unlike the third one. And it certainly has some interesting additions, like the aliens being able to swim. Not to mention them learning how to use that red button thing. It was maybe a little annoying that you didn't know that it was freezing before they used it on one of the human beings. I gotta say, everyone I've ever watched it with, I think their first thought was just, oh, steam. The role that Renona Ryder plays is not bad, but at what point does it get to be kinda stupid how all four movies just have to have a fucking android character? Seriously, it was good in the first two, then it just kinda got to be, okay, we gotta have an android in this movie. Also, while I don't have a problem with the idea of, you know, this generation of androids having been built by other machines and then, you know, they get rebellious, don't want to follow orders, the dude who provides this backstory is the most fucking excitable person on the planet. He's just like, oh fuck, I never thought I'd meet one of you guys. And when he talks to one of the bounty hunters about ammo, he looks like he's jizzing his pants or something. Also, no matter how many fucking times I watch this movie, I never notice when he joins up. He's just suddenly there. I mean, I get that he's one of the soldiers and he apparently thinks that he can do more good by helping them than by following the original orders or whatever, but I have no idea when they meet up with him. Is it in the basketball room, maybe? I don't know. It also kind of sucks that they had to kill off Michael Wincott so fucking fast. I guess Ripley was due a new personality, but she's kind of annoying and flat and not that compelling. It's also kind of weird how she goes back and forth between, you know, oh no, this thing was inside of me, you're all gonna die, and I'm its mother. Seriously, what was that? In general, there's a lot of weird in this movie. Also, while her outfit is pretty cool, the black nail polish just seems a bit over the top. Her having acid for blood now kind of raises questions that this franchise really can't afford us to be asking. Perlman is badass, but he always is. Seriously. Seriously, if I just say the words toothless Russian, you think that sounds pretty pathetic. If I say he's played by Ron Perlman, then you already know that he somehow makes it cool. How the hell did Cole teleport up to the top floor from, you know, being shot and I think falling back down the water? As far as interesting elements in this one, in addition to what I've already mentioned, let's be honest, the chest bursting dude killing the guy with the gun, that's pretty fucking cool. You know, he's running and he's got all the adrenaline going so he's not stopped by the bullets and then he just punches him and he kind of hugs him and it goes out to... That's cool. L3 seemed to kind of take liberties with how much time had to pass before chest bursting occurred. 
this one might also, but it's a little difficult to tell how much time is passing early on in the film, so I'm not sure if days actually pass between the face hugging and the chest bursting or not. And since the one in Alien 3 was, you know, on a dog or an ox and not a human being, maybe the time it takes wasn't really screwed around with until Paul W. S. Anderson got his talentless hack hands on the franchise. Franchises. Seriously, are there any gamers left who don't agree that the man should stay far the fuck away from all video game franchises? Even if that would mean that he'd get to spend more time with Mila Jovovich. Lucky bastard. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. As far as the special edition goes, I'd say most of the editions are pretty good. The intro gets nastier. As for the ending... I don't know, I guess it's an interesting enough setup for a sequel, which will probably never come. But honestly, in spite of what I said about Alien 3, I'm not sure the franchise should ever really visit Earth. I mean, the final post-apocalyptic shot of Earth is pretty cool. I don't know, it's just, before that point we've never seen Earth in this series, and I'm not sure we ever should. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it.